welcome back to our family travels. When we last left you, we finally wrapped up all of our crazy cross-country travel for events and headed into the Utah wilderness to get back to doing what we love most, exploring this magnificent planet. In this new season of adventure, we're celebrating 10 years of overland travel as a family and making ourselves at home wherever we go in our new trailer. After putting it through its paces on some spectacular trails the day before, we made camp at a decent time of the day for a change, which gave Sarah time to whip up a delicious dinner. And so, we're picking back up where we last left you, wrapping up a peaceful night of sleep in a small meadow surrounded by towering conifers. Can you say good morning? Good morning! the best feeling in the world the best feeling in the world yeah yeah this season we're taking the time to answer a lot of questions we've gotten over the years by showing you more of the quote-unquote real life parts of our travels as well as some of the gear we use to make our adventures more convenient and comfortable speaking of which let's cover a common question about dealing with our trash well good morning we get a lot of questions about camping in bear country and how do we keep our smells down and stay safe and all that kind of stuff. Well, the number one thing is just to be situationally aware, know what's going on around you at all times, as much as possible, and then keep your smells down. And one of the ways that we keep our smells down, especially during the night once we go into bed, is we move our trash bag into either a hard-sided vehicle or one of the compartments on the trailer itself. Now, the trash bag that we've been using for the past three and a half, almost four years now, is the Northbound Expeditions GARB, and that stands for Garbage and Recycling Bag. So, I'm going to pull it out of the GX here, show you how quick it goes back on to the tire. And if you don't have something like this, I highly recommend that you find a bag that's going to allow you to do that. You can also pull the trash bags out, but i found that pulling them out of the bag sometimes starts to rip them, and then you end up with juicy stuff, places you don't want it. So of a weird way to start the morning but realistic routines so the secret to this configuration is there are dedicated straps that stay on the tire i think a lot of bag manufacturers have gone this route so you're not fighting the weight of the bag trying to get it all aligned we've provided some feedback to northbound and there's actually some new straps right here that make it even easier to cinch on instead of trying to get your buckle just right so uh, really excited to see those come out we actually sell these in our store by the way if you want to check them out there but what we got here is just two little clips and you just slide the tail on it right like that and that guy goes in there slide this guy in here like this and pull. I like that. Now, up here on the main compartment, you got a spot to put your own custom patch there. You got a zipper where I keep all of my spare trash bags. You know, I'm not a fan of exposed zippers, but this is the only one on this bag, so it's a winner. Thankfully, it's not a compartment you access often. But the main thing in any trash bag is you want your main flap to be accessed by buckles. You do not want a zipper on this. So now, inside we have a drawstring just to keep this nice and tight. And because it has the name garbage and recycling, we've got room for two bags. So we've got these little buckle clips that keep the bags in place. So you can do recycling on one side, garbage on the other however you like. Under the hood up here, we've got another little secret trick. These are additional straps, so you could hang some traction boards here, you could hang firewood up here, whatever else you wanted to do. We don't really use that very much ourselves, but it's an option to have. It's nice when your traction boards are filthy, stinking muddy, and you just wanna haul them home in a nice spot that's not gonna get your rig all dirty. 
over on this side this is where we keep our uh, special shovel for doing special things a hatchet which doubles as our tent peg driver over here we got a bunch of tent pegs nice and handy ready to go there's grommet drains in the bottom of these bags so they won't fill up the water and this is the uh, foot to our high lift jack and that just lives right there and then if you're a fan of molly accessories you've got a whole panel right here for attaching your molly stuff pretty dang nice now we can get rid of the last night's tappers After breakfast, I began packing down camp while Sarah attended to some online work and phone calls using the flat mount Starlink we've mounted on the roof of Aspen. You might not know this, but another important part of keeping this adventure going is our overlandprovision.com store, where we not only sell our own merch and some select gear we love, but it also features other creators' merch like Epic Family Road Trip, Mountain State Overland, Venture Forward, Primal Outdoors, and Swell Runner Overland. Today, Sarah is finalizing some new designs with the creators before sending them off to begin production. Since many of them live on the road full time, it's not easy to produce, store, and ship merch. So that's where we step in and help our friends make sure their logos can be proudly worn by their biggest fans. Be sure and check out their YouTube channels if you haven't already. Hi! What do you think about that spot? Swing us, Dad. Uh, mm. By now, we were all itching to get on with the fun part, but first, we needed to ensure Abigail's morning nap was restful, which makes for a much more enjoyable drive. Then, we were ready to pack down and hit the trail, but not before one more important step, leaving it better than we found it. Maybe you've noticed that we haven't filmed many trash pickups lately, and that's simply because we've seen a dramatic improvement to the campsites we visited in the past couple years, so there hasn't been much to clean up great job folks at spreading the message and helping us leave places better and better. Finally, we were on the road and headed south to see if we could find a few more pockets of fall colors as winter was slightly delayed this year. As we climbed in elevation, we left the last of the colorful trees behind us since winter had already made its mark here above 10,000 feet and it wouldn't be long before these roads would be impassable to anything without tracks. But for now, we were fortunate enough to sneak in one more mountain ride while enjoying the last bit of warm sunny weather. When we got our new trailer, 
I quickly installed some massive mud flaps to help reduce the rock strikes and prevent heavy mud from building up on the entry steps. Now, in my haste, I knew I'd mounted them too close to the tire, and if the conditions were right, I could back onto them and rip them right off. I guess I was having too much fun today and forgot about the potential issue when I attempted to back down a hill so Sarah could film me driving back up. Needless to say, it didn't end well for the mud flap. <laughs> it's tearing off. I should have known better. <laughs> Anyhow. Okay. You want me to go film this really cool thing? Let's film this shot. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to back it up to make it a better shot, but. Not today. I'm surprised it held on longer than it did. I was like, why am I going to give a gas to go backwards down a hill? <laughs> Must be a problem. <laughs> oh well, take two. While we've passed through this area before, there were several unexplored trails leading to some lakes that we decided to investigate in hopes of finding a lakeside camp for the night. But as we rounded a bend in the trail, my jaw hit the ground when we came across something that we never would have expected to find here in the middle of the wilderness. We've come across a lot of strange stuff on the trail in the past, and some pretty cool old machinery, but never have we come across deuce and a half half track look at this then you pan oh my goodness are you serious let's take a closer look at this bad boy. wow are you kidding me right now who would just leave that? I don't behind? know. Behind. The most random place too. Oh my goodness. It had to have been one of the ranchers. A white diesel. That's cool. It's got this bush growing right up through the bottom of it. That is so cool. <laughs> Something I guess. Could have been loggers too. I don't see that every day. Ready for a little ride? Nice little slow row after your nap. Not for that car scene, right? Not for that car scene. <laughs> so this is not a new area to us. We've been up here a couple of times, but this trail in particular is. And we've been checking out some of these offshoots finding some pretty fancy, fancy camps. Boy, this one might be it. This one might be it for tonight. Wow, look at this. And there's a bald eagle. There's a bald eagle right there. There he comes, there he goes. Look, you see him. I don't know if we need to look any further. 
Mr. Eagle just said, the ploy landing gear right here. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm in love with this spot. I think I'm gonna do it. All right, we found another option. Because <laughs> we just can't stop. Like if it's this good, it must be a little bit better down the road. And it was. At least with it not being windy. But now we're right on the water. I hope Mr. Eagle comes back to visit again. So I mostly just do this to stabilize the experience. Right there is about perfect. All right, late to camp yet again, but it was worth all that extra effort. And now it's time to whip up a very, very special meal. Um, this one's always been near and dear to my heart. Hope you guys enjoy it as well. Take this idea, you know, do with it what you will, but uh, let's just jump into it.
Oh yeah. Steam burns, baby. to 2023. Prepare yourself for a culinary <laughs> delight. Mm, don't give away my secret. Okay. <laughs> and yet another Thank creation you. just for you. Enjoy. Thank you. The white bread is just straight fluffiness. Um, chili, on par. On par for canned chili. Um, but the hot dog is where it really starts to come together. That, that ladies and gentlemen, is an all beef frank. Sarah did not scrimp on this at all. And you know, all beef franks are basically just tube steak. Seriously, don't you want a hot dog now? Uh, uh. <laughs> we literally aren't doing anything. How's it feel up here? You got your heat duct set up? Yeah. Stretch it out. You still got some extra there. No, 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 not just. You said to stretch it out. <laughs> no. You pull it loose outside. Like... Oh, it's so cold, Dad. <laughs> Big wine. Which smell gonna help? Yeah, this All is right. Kachina. 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 <sighs> I'm going to gobble her up when I find her. Oh. <laughs> Bowl. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? It was fine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Just embracing it. Yeah, it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> So how'd you like that setup compared to the old Coleman? Definitely safer. <laughs> <laughs> you need Kevlar gloves that time. Yeah. So usually when the oven comes out, it means something delicious is about to happen. What are we having for breakfast? Cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Although I don't have oil to keep them from sticking for it to the pan. Just leave. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what I could use. Um, do you have bacon? Mm hmm So let's cook some bacon and use the grease as our lubricant. That would work. Okay. It's starting to cook. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did enough to like eat. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. I, I thought it was work. worth a shot since we like to cook our you bacon. Should put it on the bottom rack. See, that's what I thought too, but put, I wasn't sure. Put it on the bottom rack. Okay. Anyhow. Anyhow. I hear it sizzling. Yeah. I think this little rug has been one of the best ideas yet. What do you think? You like hanging out down here? You see some toys now, right? <laughs> do you think there's fish in this lake? I know there is. I heard them jumping. Oh. There's some big ones out there. Gotta lick your fingers after that. <laughs> Is she keeping you warm? <laughs> Something. Bacon? Yes. It just melts. So now she just gets the gold? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I mean, in that. Look at that. Hot dog. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Let's do it. Can you believe we get to eat cinnamon rolls here? Here. The real question is, uh, did it work? Yep. Mm, nice. Didn't stick. Oh, look at that. It's like better than Pam. I know. Dang. Can you taste the bacon? Not really. Pretty good. Man. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. You got a big glob in your mustache. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. Is that good? So this trail has just continued to get tighter and tighter and a little more gnarly as we go. So I'm gonna get on the bike and scout a little further ahead, make sure we're not getting into something we should probably avoid. Wolf, you think? Or coyote? So no windows usually means it's too cold to deal with. Yeah, there's just one. Just the facing, one. Facing the sun. Facing south. Yep. Pretty cool, though. They weren't worried about the lake view. No. They <laughs> just wanted the sun to come in. Yeah, it looks like someone might have won the race, but they lost their soul. Ooh, wind. Oh, there's that wind. It's your friend.
So I might not be a professional tracker, but I've noticed something on this trail. These are passenger tire markings. You can see how particular and careful they were about avoiding every large rock as they made their way slowly along this trail. And I bring this up because if you're trying to figure out if a trail is accessible, navigable, navigable, na nav one of those things, um, when you see passenger tire tracks like that, chances are you can get out the other side. Because this guy obviously brought the family back here in the minivan. <laughs> Well, that was pretty cool. That's one of the best herd viewings we've had in a while. Just saw the, there was actually two in that previous shot and I just watched them working their way up. And then uh, came around the bend here on the bike and there's a whole herd of them up there and they're still just milling about. <sighs> pretty cool. I love this stuff. Just for safety. In case that gives up. Alright. It's drone time. <laughs>
warm down here. It is nice and warm down here. All right, folks. Well, thanks for riding along yet again on this high altitude adventure. This is probably a goodbye to the high country until next spring. So, hope you enjoyed it. And we did. Next time you see us, we'll probably be in the desert somewhere while things are cooling down. Maybe in the snow. We'll see. But as always, stay curious and remember to leave it better than you found it. I'll see you on the next one. Oh.